Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speaker is Dorothea Hendricks. Dorothea is the founder of Art of Speaking for Success workshops and coaching. Dorothea believes that everything changes in your life when you change how you speak and how you present yourself to your peers and your clients. Dorothea is a former provincial champion speaker who has coached speakers, entrepreneurs, and business professionals to master their presentation skills and speaking competencies. Welcome, Dorothea Hendricks. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you for this opportunity to share all about public speaking and public speaking skills. And I just have trouble putting on the microphone. Woohoo! So welcome everybody. As entrepreneurs, as business owners, you know, we all have an idea, a product, a service, something that we believe in, that we feel is so important and will make a difference in people's lives. In fact, it may even change the world. And for that, public speaking is really important because public speaking is the way that we get out and let the world know about our idea, our product and our service. So this isn't just me talking, but one of the world's richest men, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is really keen on communication skills. And he tells people that it's so important to improve your communication skills and master your public speaking. He gave a talk at Columbia University. And in that talk, he told the students, he said, I guarantee, I guarantee that you will earn 50% more in your lifetime if you improve your communication skills and master the skill of public speaking. So when Warren Buffett first thought, when he first entered his own career, his own business, he thought about doing public speaking because he thought, mm, this is really vital. And when he signed up for the Dale Carnegie course, what he did at the last minute, he canceled his check. Then later on, he realized again that in order for him to move forward in his career, he had to master public speaking, become adept at public speaking. And so what he did, he signed up a second time for the Dale Carnegie course, but this time what he did is he took cash and walked right down to the office and registered. Hey, if it's good enough for Warren Buffett, I'll say public speaking is good enough for me. So in this presentation right now, we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna share with you some of the tips that really help you in your public speaking, tips that will help you hone your message, you know, get your message out there, and also how to build your credibility and give you a quick tip on how to create an instant speech. So tips to create an effective message. I guess the very first thing, the number one tip that we all need, that we all need to know right in the beginning is what is our message? What is it that you want to tell people about your product, your service, your idea? And so when we're thinking in terms of your message, the idea here is what is this one thing, the thought, the feeling, the action that you want people to take at the end of your talk? When they pick their bum up out of the seat and they walk out that door, what is it that you want them to think, do, or feel? Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, has a great habit. And I often think about this whenever I'm coaching people, telling them about how to put their message together. And that is this. Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. So what is that end? That feeling, that thought, that action that you want people to take. And when you know what that is, in the palm of your hand, a maximum of 20 words, 10 to 20 words, write down your message. My message is, when I am finished, I want people to do, feel, think, whatever it is. Tip number two, be clear, simple, and succinct in your message. If people have to think about, oh my goodness, what did the person say? What do they mean? You've already lost them, and they're going to spend time missing what you're talking about as they're trying to think, what does this person mean? What are they saying? So, so important when we're thinking about our message, is it something that is clear, simple, succinct, easy for people to understand? The idea here is just not to get what you're saying heard, 
the idea here is to get it understood because people can do something with information they understand. So make it clear, simple, and succinct. Tip number three, the old sales adage with him. Be relevant. What is in it for your audience? What is in it for the people who are listening to you talk about your product, your service, or promote your idea? How does it affect them? What will it do for them? So the with them concept. So know your message, be clear on your message, and be relevant with your message. The next thing that I'd like to mention here in terms of giving the presentation with your message, being clear on it, is stories. We all love stories. There's so much out there right now about telling stories, being able to tell a story. And what you want to do is make your point, tell your point, and then tell a story. Share a story. Because stories, that's how we learn. That's how we experience. I get to know a bit about you. You get to know a little bit more about me. And we know now how we can tie and integrate this information through the story that we just heard. Storytelling is a powerful vehicle to help you promote your idea, share your product or your service, and influence the buying decision. So when it comes to stories, here's one about public speaking that I'd like to share with you about my friend Ben. Ben was somebody that I was coaching, and he was telling me how a number of years ago he had applied for a position in a, in a firm to be one of the, in the marketing department. And so he goes and he applies, and on the same day that he gets hired, two other people were also hired. He said, it was great. My colleagues and I, we dove into our projects at work, keen, intelligent, driven, creative. And then he's telling me about a year and a half after he had already been hired, the other two colleagues, the people he, that were hired at the same time, were now moving up the ladder to success. They were getting more contracts. They were receiving more recognition in the firm. And here he was, he said, I felt like I was being left behind and I couldn't understand why. I was as smart as they were. I am talented and I'm driven, but I just wasn't moving as fast as they were and I couldn't understand why. So one day at a meeting, it just hit me. I had an epiphany. I realized the difference between those two people and myself. In every meeting that we had, and of course we have lots of meetings, they were standing up and presenting their points. They offered to do presentations. They were out there wanting to give presentations. Me, I'm a bit of an introvert, and so, and I also need to think about what is it that I want to say, because I never want to say anything that I can't just make sure that it's neat, tidy and makes a lot of sense. So by the time my thought process is finished, well, the meeting was over and everybody would have gone there and everybody went their different ways. So I found for myself now that I thought, hmm, I need to do something. I need to beef up my presentation skills. I need to take up public speaking. I don't like public speaking, but I'm going to learn to do public speaking. And so Ben joined Toastmasters and I ended up helping him move forward so now he's out there getting presentations. He's out there standing up, expressing his thoughts in meetings and letting himself not only be heard, he's letting himself be seen and known and he's moving up the ladder to success. Being able to articulate your thoughts, tell stories to prove your point makes a big difference. That's tip number four, telling stories. Tip number five, vocal variety. Sometimes people say, ah, uh, giving a presentation, doing public speaking is like, just like having a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. I used to say that myself. Oh, it's just like having a conversation with one person. But the fact remains that you're not having a conversation with just one person. You're having a conversation that is amplified. You're now speaking maybe to 10 people, 100 people, 500 people. So it's going to be different than having just a conversation with one person. And this is where your voice comes in. We need to be bigger, bolder, more animated in using our voice than when we're just having a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. And our voice carries so much color. I sometimes listen to speakers and they drive me crazy because they're standing in front of an audience 
and they're just speaking as if they're speaking in their normal tone. There's no extra excitement, no extra, extra energy that goes with it. And we need to convey that through our voice, our enthusiasm, our excitement, the color. For example, if I'm having a conversation with you, and I've heard people say something along this line, in the past six months, have you made an investment and now regretted that you made it? And then they're going on with their information. But how much more effective would it be if you're looking at your audience and you're saying, in the past six months, have you, have you made an investment that you now regret? As opposed to in the past six months, have you made an investment that you now regret? That's cushioned in between information here and information following it. And it can get lost if it is really important where you want them to think about, your audience to think about, have they made an investment? Have they done it in the past six months? And has it been something they regretted? And if you're talking about financial investments, you need to know this and you need to bring it out so that they will think about it. You'll pique their interest and get them to think about, ah, I've made an investment. And yes, it has been within the last six months. And whoa, I really do regret it. Now this gives you some leverage in how you can move forward. Or just saying something like, I have an amazing product that will benefit you in every way. I can just say, I have an amazing product that will benefit you in every way. And that's cushioned between information here and information there, and it gets lost. However, if I stop and I'm looking at you, everyone in my audience, and I'm going, I have some information. I've got a product that is an amazing product, and it will help you in so many ways. So again, the voice adds texture, it adds color, it can add emphasis, but we underutilize our voice because sometimes we think, oh, I'm overacting. Sometimes when you're doing public speaking in order to add that extra emphasis, maybe you do have to propel yourself, raise the bar on yourself so that you are adding color and maybe it feels like acting, but on the other hand, you are embellishing to the extent that you want people to understand feel and believe in what you've got to say. And that has to come from inside yourself. So the next tip here I'm gonna say is on body language. And that's tip number six, body language. There's so much said about body language. Some people say, use your space, you know, be big, be bold in your gestures. I'm gonna say what's really important is that you be sincere, that you be natural, and that your body language support what you're saying. One of the most effective speakers that I ever heard and I've ever listened to was a man who never moved from his spot. I'm pretty well stationary standing here in front of a camera. And this man did the same, he never moved his spot, but he wasn't standing in front of a camera, he was standing in front of 30, 40 people talking about a topic that was very complex. And yet he did it in a way that was easy to understand and it was so engaging. And yet he had one hand in his pocket and the other hand was on a projector. And then he moved to the other side with the other hand in his pocket and the other hand on top of a projector. And he had his audience riveted. And that's because he did two things exceptionally well. Number one, he was an incredible storyteller, a remarkable storyteller. And what he did is he took his topic and he created little capsules of time. And he started here and he transitioned into the next capsule and to the next capsule until he was done. He was amazing in how he had organized his content. And the other area that was totally amazing was the fact that he had an incredible voice. And he had trained himself in public speaking and taking courses and made sure that he was able to use the maximum range, the voice, the tone, the volume, the variety, and inserting the pauses when necessary. And also how he spoke. There were moments when he spoke in an exciting manner and he would raise his voice, go faster, and then time slower. But it was the body language that I found most fascinating. Now, interestingly enough, when people often talk about public speaking and talk about body language, they quote the, what is it, the 7%, the 735 or 738, 55% rule. And that is attributed to someone called Albert Moravian. Albert Moravian and his group of researchers in the mid 60s, what they did is they ran experiments. And there were two experiments and the seven, 38%, 55% rule comes from these two experiments. 
And Albert Moravian, when you go and check on the internet, will say that he has often been misquoted that this rule that we've got here, the 738, 55%, is not applicable in our communication in every aspect of everyday communication. When they did these experiments, these two experiments, they revolved around wanting to determine and experiment and find out about the communication of attitudes and feelings. So what resonated when people communicated their feelings and their attitudes? And that's all it had to do with was feelings and attitudes. So in the first experiment, what they did is they had subjects listen to someone who recorded words. These words were not connected, but these words were spoken in three different, in three different ways. One showing light, positive, woohoo. Another one just showing neutrality. The words were spoken neutrally. And then again, the words were spoken in a, in a negative, dislike. So like, neutral, and dislike. Now what happened is the subjects then were showing pictures of the words. They, they, they heard the words and then they heard the tone. And they were asked to which had more impact in letting them know about the person's feelings or attitudes. And of course they chose the tone, that the tone was more expressive and conveyed more of the person's like, dislike or neutral tone than the actual words themselves. The second experiment actually took into where again, they had subjects that listen to somebody recording a voice, you know, of words, like, neutral, dislike. And then also they showed photos of this person's facial expression showing liking something, the words, disliking and neutral. And now they asked the subject to choose which conveyed the emotion, the feelings, the attitude of the person more. And of course, the end result was that the body language, the facial expression conveyed more of the feeling and the attitude than the actual tone. So we had words, tone, and body language. So now this suddenly has been taken and it's posted up there that this is how you do public speaking, that our body language means so much. Now, if I wasn't talking and right now you were only watching my body language, What's my point? I can do all the body language that I want and you may never get my point. My body language should support my words. So whatever it is that I'm saying should be supported by that body language. We live in a world of words. Our words have energy, they have power, they have incredible meaning. Think of emails, think of documents, think of we can't go anywhere without having words, seeing words, listening to words. Now, if you want to know my inner feelings, yes, if there's a discrepancy between the word that's coming out of my mouth or my attitude and my words and my body language don't match, yeah, then you're going to believe my body language and my credibility will probably go down in the toilet. But in the great scheme of life, our body language is here to support, to prompt, to help people understand our words, not to take the place of our language, not to take the place of our words. So body language is important and to take it into context and know that it isn't everything, but it is a lot along with our voice. And the final tip I'm gonna say here in terms of public speaking and in making sure that your message, you get your message across clearly, simply, succinctly, that it's relevant. You've got your stories, you've got your vocal variety and your body language. So this last tip, tip number seven, is about enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. It doesn't matter what your topic is. Sometimes I hear people say, oh, I'm talking about insurance. Oh, I'm just giving a monthly report at the end of the month. It doesn't, enthusiasm doesn't mean that you have to hang from the rafters, that I have to go jumping up and down and go, woohoo, you know, we're going to be talking about the budget today. Woohoo, you know, everybody hang on to your ass. That's not the issue. The issue here is enthusiasm that you believe in what you're saying and that it matters, that you like your job and that what you're conveying to people is that that enthusiasm, that interest. And that is actually what builds your credibility. They do studies and those people that have done countless studies on speaking and building confidence and credibility over and over again, it comes out that where people show enthusiasm, where they show that they've got a passion, a commitment to what they're talking about, to what they're doing, that they are more credible. 
How could you not be more credible when you actually believe in what you're talking about? So credibility kind of follows and blends into enthusiasm. They kind of go hand in hand. I just think that everybody who's giving a presentation, and we talk about public speaking, right now you may think about, oh, you have to stand in front of a crowd of hundreds. Ain't necessarily so. You're doing public speaking at work when you're speaking in front of your peers. You're standing and doing a sales presentation. You're doing a presentation on a budget report, or maybe you know, looking at a new idea, new strategies, you know, new ways of implementing a new procedure. That's all public speaking because you're standing and sharing your idea, your product, your service with other people, and you're wanting them to understand it, to adopt it, and to move forward with you. You want to be a person of influence. And you can't be a person of influence if you can't articulate your thoughts, express your ideas so that people can buy into them. They can hear them, understand them, and buy into them. I love this line. I, I was uh, doing something out at one of the universities and a young engineer, he was instructing in the class and he told me, he says, I tell my students, I tell them, get people intoxicated with your topic. Get people intoxicated with what you do. It's so important to bring them into your world. That's how I feel about public speaking. I feel that public speaking is one of the things that everybody, everybody should do. Dive into it. Because when you get into it, you cannot help but change the way you look at yourself, the confidence that you build up in yourself, how you articulate your thoughts and bring other people into your world. You can't intoxicate people with your ideas, with your topics, with what you want to do. You can't bring them in and make them do things, influence them in any way if you can't express, articulate your thought. So those are my seven tips for creating a powerful message. Making sure that you know your message. Making sure that your message is clear, simple, and succinct. Making sure that your message is relevant. What's in it for them, for the people that you're speaking to. Making sure that you're sharing story. Yeah, give your facts. Tell your points. And then share a story to kind of support it, back it up. Add in that vocal variety. Your voice is an amazing instrument. Use it. Body language. Make it fluid, make it natural, make it you. And the last one is building in that enthusiasm. Credibility comes from enthusiasm. And I think credibility is something that if you're wavering, not feeling confident, not feeling sure of yourself, people won't believe you. And if they don't believe you, they can't trust you. And if they can't trust you, they're not gonna take your product, not gonna buy your service, not gonna get into your idea. So I'd like to wrap up right now by giving you a quick tip on how to create a quick instant speech. Now, I'm going to say it's an instant speech, but I'm going to say for anyone who wants to try this, it takes practice. And it's called a prep formula. Anybody in Toastmasters out there, you already know this is a formula that Toastmasters use. And the prep formula is this. The P stands for your point. And the R stands for your reason. And the E stands for your example. And the P stands for your point. So someone may ask you to put together a presentation very quickly on a topic. Now, they're never going to ask you to put together a presentation on something you don't know anything about. It will be your area of expertise. So decide on your point. So the point is maybe that uh, you feel that Vancouver should not be putting synthetic turf into parks. I feel strongly that Vancouver should not be putting synthetic turf into parks, that we should keep our grass clean and natural. My reason for this is that natural grass adds to the environment, it cools the ground, lots of little critters live in the ground, live in the grass, and uh, it just makes for a very pretty soft place to, on which to put your picnic basket. For example, one of the parks in which we have synthetic turf, well, you know, put a picnic blanket on it, we're supposed to, but it's hard, it's plastic. The other thing is that when it rains, all these little microfibers, they end up going down into the waterway and then, you know, going out into the oceans and into our marine life. So in the end, plastic turf, synthetic grass, I believe really we shouldn't be putting it into our parks in Vancouver. That's the prep formula. You've got your point, you've got your reason, you've got your example, and you've got your point. 
So entrepreneurs, business owners, in fact, everybody out there, whether you're an employee or an employer, I really encourage you, master the skill of public speaking. No, it worked for Warren Buffett, and I bet you anything, if it worked for Warren Buffett, it will work for you too. Dorothea, you've just changed my life. Thank you very <laughs> much for those seven tips. Thank you, Roger. And I'm going to say for anybody who is interested, I do do coaching, presentation skills workshops. So, and I look forward to hearing you because I think that the information that Roger has will be on my website. And uh, in fact, my website will be on Roger's information. Back to you, Roger. Hey, I can turn.